Hello everyone, this is the third episode of my Arduino basic series. Today we are going to read analog voltages with the Arduino, learn about the voltage divider and using the serial port. Also, we are going to make a slightly more complicated conditional structure than we did last time. Let's get started. Project will work as it is shown in the figure. We are going to read the voltage output of a potentiometer, it will fall between 0 and 1023. If the reading is in the first third of the spectrum, the first LED will light up. If the reading is in the second third, the first two LED will light up. And if the reading is in the last third, all of the LEDs will light up. For this project we will need a breadboard, an Arduino, a potentiometer, three 220 ohms resistor, three LED, nine male to male jumper wires, and the USB cable. The only new hardware is the potentiometer. It has three terminals, two of them are on the same side, let's call those terminals 1 and 3, and the one on the other side 2. When we turn the shaft, the resistance between 1 and 2 and between 2 and 3 changes. The sum of these two resistances is what we can measure between terminals 1 and 3. This constant resistance is written on the potentiometer also. If we want to know what values we can read from the potentiometer, let's take a look at the schematic. We can model the potentiometer with two resistors in series, and we are interested in the voltage of the node between them. We can find the voltage by using the fact that the same current is flowing through both resistors. Knowing the supply voltage and the sum of the two resistances, we get the resulting current. This current is the same which passes through the second resistance, so we can substitute one equation into the other, and we can express the output voltage as a function of the input voltage and the resistances. This circuit is called the voltage divider because it divides the input voltage. Just as a sanity check to see if our model is good or not, see what happens if we turn the potentiometer halfway. Substituting R divided by 2 for both R1 and R2, we get that the output voltage is half the input voltage. Seems correct. We can see that the maximum voltage we can measure will be the supply voltage, and the minimum is 0 volt. Let's connect the circuit. Connecting the potentiometer is quite straightforward. On the side where it has two terminals, connect one to 5 volts and the other to ground, and the terminal on the other side to an analog pin. The other part of our circuit is where we need three LEDs to light up when we say so. By now you are an expert at connecting and interfacing with the LEDs, so I won't bore you with the details. So far we only work with two voltage levels, 5 and 0 volts, now we are going to read everything between. But since our Arduino is a digital device, we can't represent any arbitrary voltage between those two values. When the Arduino reads an analog value, the signal goes through an analog to digital converter, or ADC for short. This ADC has a given resolution, which determines how accurately the Arduino can represent that analog value after the conversion. Our Arduino have a 10-bit converter, which means it can represent 2 to the power of 10 or 1024 different voltage levels. The readings will go up to 1023 because the counting starts from zero. Ok, let's move on to the code. We start by declaring the five variables. One will read the potentiometer's voltage, pot read, another will be the analog read pin, pot pin, and three pins for the three LEDs, LED1, LED2, and LED3. Next, we need to declare the pin's functionality in the void setup. Also, we want the Arduino to send back information to the computer about the state of the potentiometer. We will do this with the serial communication. The serial communication will be a topic of a later video, now we just cover the basics. We have to start the communication by typing serial.begin and in the parentheses type the baud rate, 9600 will be perfect for us. Ok, we had a lot of new things there. First, we have not seen the dot notation yet. This is used when we call a function of an object. We can organize our code into objects by grouping together data and functions. I will cover object-oriented programming in later videos, now we only need to know that there is an object called serial and it has a function called begin. Now we can write the void loop. At the beginning of every cycle of the void loop, we want to assign the value of the potentiometer's readings to potread. Then we create the conditionals. 
The first condition for the if statement is when the pot read is less than 1023 divided by 3, which is 341. When this is true, the first LED lights up. We do this with the digital write function. Remember, we also have to turn off the other LEDs. In the else's brackets, we write another if statement. The condition for that is when the pot read is less than 2 times 341, which is 682. Remember, we only enter this branch of the code if the pot read is bigger than or equal to 341, so we don't have to write that explicitly. When we enter this branch, we want our code to light up the first two LEDs. Again, we do this with the digital write. For this if statement, we will also need an else statement, for the last case when the pot read falls in the last third of the spectrum. When we enter this branch, we know that the pot read is greater than or equal to 682, so we don't have to test it anymore. When the code enters this branch, it can turn on all the LEDs. Finally, we want to print the value of the pot read to the computer. Now we will make use of the serial communication. By calling the println function, we can write a value to the serial port, and the next value will start a new line. If we call the print function, the values will be printed after each other, making the result unreadable. Finally, at the end, write a delay function with 50 milliseconds to make the program more stable. Now we can upload the code. Click on the serial monitor to see the results. I promised you we will find out where is the border between high and low for the digital read function, so let's find out. The idea is the following. We want to read the second pin of the potentiometer with an analog and a digital pin also. Let's move on to the code. We declare a variable for the analog input pin, pot pin A, and one for the digital input pin, pot pin D. One for the reading of the analog value, pot read A, and another for the digital value, pot read D. The type of the variable pot read A will be float, which is almost like real numbers. We need this because we will convert the pot read A from the 0 to 1023 range to the 0 to 5 range. In the void setup, we set up the serial port and the pins functionality. Then in the void loop, we need to assign the analog reading to pot read A and the digital reading to pot read D at the start of every cycle. After that, we print the values to the serial monitor. For that, we will use a simple print function of the serial object. We can also write characters and words to the serial port if we put them into quotation marks. The words you type within those quotation marks are yet another types, they are called strings. The last print statement will be with the println function, because we need a new line after printing the last words. The analog value will be multiplied by 5 and divided by 1023 in order to get a value between 0 and 5. Now we made the printing lines for our taste and upload. We can see that the border between high and low for the digital read function is somewhere around 2.5 volts. Now we can sense with our Arduino button pressing and rotary motion also. In the next tutorial we are going to adjust the brightness of an RGB LED with pulse width modulation or PWM for short. If you got interested in doing these projects and want to follow along, I give you links to the kits I use in the description below, so you can have the exact same components I have. If you have any question, observation or feedback, please leave a comment below. Also, if you liked this video, let me know by like, share and subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next episode.